Good morning to your daily news update from the Frankfurt office of CMC Markets. Wow, what a day for the crude oil markets for Brent and WTI. They um, yeah, went sharply up yesterday, just right after the opening here in Frankfurt. There were rumors coming out from the G20 meeting in China that Saudi Arabia wants to uh, announce something of uh, great significance. And then there was Russia saying, okay, we will support what Saudi Arabia will announce around noon. And uh, so in the morning hours, there was a lot of speculation about what the Saudis will, um, will announce in, in, in China. And then at noon, prices went up by 5% um, in print and WTI. And then there was Saudi Arabia actually announcing that they will have some special some special um, institution that they will build in October together with Russia. And this institution will have the task and uh, the, uh, the goal to watch oil markets and stabilize oil markets, but only stabilize them by uh, recommending um, best practices and uh, recommend um, best uh, production volumes. But automatically this means that there need to be uh, as many countries joining that institution as possible. So they want to reinstate a, an OPEC, which they have um, virtually dropped um, in the year 2014. There was when they, back then, the uh, Saudi Arabia said, okay, market prices and the free markets should um, set the price and the fair price of oil. And now they try to reinstate and reinstall that OPEC and reinstall an, an institution which is somehow given recommendations to whom, I don't know. Um, so most traders didn't know either yesterday. So they dropped their long positions in crude, went sharply down again. So over half of the gains have been lost. If you look at the intraday chart of WTI and Brent yesterday, they formed in head and shoulders pattern and the target of that already activated and triggered head and shoulders pattern are new daily lows. So lower than yesterday's open is the target of that topping formation. So it will be interesting to see what comes out of WTI and uh, Brent prices today. So um, when it comes to T G20, um, the Great 20 meeting and summit in China, there was also um, some news from Japan. There was Shinzo Abe, the Japanese premier, and uh, Kuroda, the um, uh, Bank of uh, Japan president, who said um, that actually after they um, somehow checked the running QE programs, and um, they wanted to find out. That's what they did in the past months. They just um, checked every single step they took in regards to quantitative easing, and they tried to find out which one of them is, if, is still effective, has some effect uh, whatsoever. And um, they found out that, well, they do not have the effects that um, the Bank of Japan and Shinzo Abe and the government would like it to have. And so many, so, so um, after they said that just some weeks ago, that it doesn't have the, the, wish, the wished effect, um, they said actually they, um, the markets started to speculate in two directions. One direction was, okay, there will be helicopter money, helicopter money coming. And the other said, okay, there could be some sort of cancellation of several uh, puzzle pieces of that QE um, scheme they have. So they roll back their asset buying, they might roll back their negative uh, interest rates. So, um, to, so it was yesterday, um, uh, Shinzo Abe or Kuroda, one of them, um, saying, okay, the end result of that um, checking of running QE programs will not be a rollback of any QE measures that are active right now. So it's open again. So um, markets are now leaning more towards the um, helicopter money and uh, even more negative rates um, coming in Japan. So they still try, of course, to weaken the yen. The yen is too strong, although the US dollar has had some rally. So dollar yen has bounced off the 100 uh, yen mark um, to the upside. So the, the yen has weakened a bit, but it has been at 120. And now it's around 100. 
so the yen is much too strong for the um, for, for Japanese uh, government and the central bank there so they will try to do anything to weaken the yen again so that will be interesting to see how they will do that monthly when you look at all central banks globally they buy assets uh, in the volume of 200 billion US dollars monthly by stocks like Japan by uh, uh, government bonds like in the eurozone the UK uh, Bank of England buy is buying uh, corporate bonds as does the ECB so together everything uh, is 200 billion around 200 billion monthly and of course that leads to some sort of complacency in the markets and equity markets if you look at the um, trading books in the US uh, um, US futures uh, markets like the CME, you see that the equity longs of hedge funds and other speculators are at their highest level ever. And if you look at the VIX, which is the volatility index, which measures, uh, which is a fear gauge, which measure, measures the implicit volatilities in the, uh, in the S&P 500 index, there are record short positions in there. So huge complacency out there. There is nobody really expecting a September rate hike by the Federal Reserve, which is an implicit danger, a risk for the markets, because if the Fed will hike rates, it will be a big surprise. So keep that in mind. It's just two weeks from now will be the next Federal Reserve meeting. So yeah, that is that. And uh, of course, record long positions in the US equity markets, which reopened after Labor Day holiday yesterday, reopened today. It will be interesting to see if the Dow Jones is able to manage a break above the 18,600 uh, 18, resistance. So it has been in a range between 18,600 and 18,000, uh, yeah, so like 250 is the lower bound. So it has formed a range, so it should break up, break to the upside with high volumes because we have been in this summer time, summer vacation volumes have been relatively weak. So there's, if the Dow Jones were to break to the upside, there should be volume behind that move. So that would be interesting to check.